have been a free country, you have the right to put anything you want into your own body. Anything else is bull****. That was Penn Jillette in a clip from his TV show that debunked nonsense like astrology, psychic, so-called natural foods. But what got my attention was that this famous magician was taking a stance on libertarian issues like the war on drugs, laws against prostitution, just the size of government. Penn and his partner Teller, though it's harder to tell with Teller because he doesn't speak, were clearly libertarian, so yippee, that's rare in the entertainment business. So, Penn, what brought you around? I was brought around to libertarianism by just good old-fashioned argument. My, uh, my friend, uh, Tim Jennison, he just kept saying, shut up, you're wrong. You're just wrong. That convinced you're wrong. you? Absolutely. Because it was done with complete respect. You know, I would say something, he would make a counter-argument, and it was compelling. And when I would say something I couldn't really back up, he just, and after about four hours, he got me so that I was thinking. And then I had to go do a lot of reading. You know, before you do a big change like that, you got to go through that reading phase. What'd you read? Um, a lot of stuff that he, uh, he recommended, you know, uh, The Road to Serfdom and some Ayn Rand and uh, all that stuff you'd expect to read. And then I got to, very shortly after that, met Harry Brown, you know. Who yeah. ran for president of the Libertarian Party. A couple of years, and was a wonderful man. Wonderful, wonderful man. And what grabbed me about libertarianism, I am very much against force. I have never hit anybody in anger in my life. I am a complete pacifist. And the idea, I remember when, um, when they had the, uh, uh, the Ohio Museum uh, with the, uh, I'm trying to find a way to say this, with, with, the, with, the, with the crucifix in the urine, that, that art piece, which I thought was great. Um, my mom and dad didn't like that. My mom and dad were Christians. And that being paid for by their tax money really, really bothered me. And it put me in that awkward position. But people don't get the, the um, connection how that is force. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, try not paying your taxes and they'll eventually be forced. So my feeling is we need taxes for certain things. We need defense. We need courts. I think the idea of a private police force is very, very frightening. We don't want to do that. But I will work so hard to help you build a library. But building a library at gunpoint, saying that we need this so badly, we're going to put a gun on you, it, it, that is the the basis of libertarianism to me is not using force. People, also, charity is a great feeling. And when it's done by force, all the joy goes away. Many people think if it's a good idea, the government should do it. Uh, the real answer is, is if it's a good idea, the government shouldn't do it. If it's a good idea, we can do it without the free people will voluntarily <laughs> yeah. do it. And I also, you know, it puts me in opposition. I mean, I've, I've never had a sip of alcohol or any drug in my life. And I was on the cover of High Times magazine because I'm very much in favor of drug legalization. I believe we need to have those freedoms, but uh, I don't want to use them myself. And uh, that's another hard thing to get across about libertarianism is most of the freedoms that I argue for, I have no desire to use for myself, but I want other people to be able to do that, even when it's stupid. I think libertarianism is the right to be stupid. <laughs> On this show, I often try to point out that government doesn't work. A libertarian, free markets do. But you told the Daily Caller, I have no evidence that libertarianism leads to a better life. I just think it's morally right. Libertarians consider freedom to be an end in and of itself, which I thought was just a fascinating idea. It, it really is true. And I why think, sell that? Why I is think it, if, if there's have, poverty, there's ending wars, there's yes, all that is good. All but good. I, I just think that uh, that freedom itself, the idea that each individual can do what they want the most individual power possible without hurting other people is an end in itself. And I also, I just don't want to use force. That's the whole thing. You know, I'll, I'll argue with you about maybe, uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing heroin, but I don't want the government to come in and do, use force for that. The charity you advocate is disproportionately supported in America by religious people, and yet your book is just out in paperback. Every day is an atheist holiday. Mm -hmm. So what's the libertarian atheist connection? I am a very strong atheist. I'm a very strong libertarian. But I know and respect uh, Christian libertarians. And I know and respect atheist liberals. 
uh, those don't necessarily go together. In my mind, they go together in that there's an incredible respect for self-reliance. So what do you say to the people, though? Government's too big. You want to just let the poor suffer? Don't we need a net? I do, a government I do think we need a net. I don't know if you need the word government in there. There was a question I was asked, um, what, one in five people in this country is poor. What does that mean to you? And I said, that means there's four people that can help them. <laughs> there's four of us that can help each individual. Ken Gillette, thank you. Coming up, my take on the rise of the libertarian. Woohoo!